The first accessory that I add to my cameras every time is a quick release mount system. You'll want one that is consistent throughout all of your equipment. To me, it just makes workflow and moving from a sling or a backpack strap to a tripod or a gimbal so much easier and more convenient. I really like the Ulanzi F38 system, and that's what I use on all of my equipment. It has a solid build quality, lightweight, and a very low profile height to it. In its base format mount, you have the top half that attaches to the bottom of your camera or camera cage, and that fits into the bottom half of the mount that you can attach to many other pieces of gear like tripod heads, monopod heads, sling mounts, and they also make a backpack strap mount for them. They also have F38 mount attachments from most of the popular gimbals. I bought the one for my DJI RS3 Mini and for my Juin Crane M3S. These are nice because they replace the original arm and have the F38 system built in, which keeps the smooth, low profile height. As opposed to just mounting a regular F38 mount on top of the standard arm. Now I want to mention that I do have one con about this mount system that you need to be aware of. Now it may not be a big deal either way to you, but for me, I'm talking about the locking lever. I don't care much for how small and smoothly finished the lever is. It can be difficult to operate, and for some instances, difficult to access underneath the camera body. However, it's a minor issue I have with it, and the other positives far outweigh that negative. Okay, another format that they make this mount in, and one of my personal favorites, is for a camera strap or a sling. And I'll touch more on this camera mount strap here in just one minute. Which brings me to my next top accessory, the Black Rapid Metro Camera Sling. This sling is super nice and serves a couple of purposes that I find very useful. This sling is great because it allows you to carry your camera on your side nice and comfortably. It wears across your body and oozes with quality in the webbing and materials used in its construction. So how does it attach to your camera? Well, the way it comes and is designed to work is with the attachment that screws to the bottom of your camera and then you hook the carabiner into it. Very secure and well-made, but it poses the problem of having to remove the bottom piece if you want to attach a different mount to the bottom of your camera, which is what my top accessory number one, the Ulanzi Falcam F38 quick release mount system solved. Well, lucky for us, Ulanzi also makes this mount for camera straps and slings. The strap mount is actually designed for your more traditional type of camera strap that usually comes with most cameras. But I've attached my Black Rapid sling to it by putting the old Sony A6000 series style metal strap mount loop on it as a place for the sling and carabiner to attach to. I'm sure if you wanted to get creative, you could probably come up with several ideas that are just as secure. But I've tried this and I have not revisited the issue ever since. It works just fine. And here is why I like carrying the camera set up like this. It just lays comfortably and safe by my side. And if I want to record a video clip, I can use the sling as a third point of attachment to help stabilize the camera like this. And I'm pulling on it across my back to help stabilize it for that third point. And believe me, it's far more comfortable than using a traditional camera neck strap that goes around the back of your neck and using that as the third point of contact when pulling on the camera and pulling on the back of your neck to stabilize. And it also has two of these adjustable stopping points that slide along the camera strap like this and one behind the camera like this. That way it has a stopping point on where it rests at when you tuck it behind you and also a stopping point when you pull it up to you like this. Very smooth and very functional. And if you want to pull up to take a quick photo or video or anything like that, that's fine. It works great for that. The real beauty in this system is the quick release mount because of how simple it is to detach the camera, just like that. And if you want to reattach it, slot it on, camera's out your way. So far, if this video is providing any value for you, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Okay, but this sling is not the cheapest on the market, and you may consider other alternatives that are less expensive and can really provide the same sort of function that this one does, just at a different material, maybe a few different features. So I tried several with the intention of keeping the one that provided the best combination of value and quality, but I ended up liking this one better than any other ones I tried. And this brings me to number three on the list. After this third item, I have a few bonus items that I need to touch on that are crucial to ensuring a successful and enjoyable outing with your camera. Okay, we need to take a quick look at lenses. For me, keeping it simple as an APS-C hybrid shooter, 
If I'm only taking one lens with me, or if I can only buy one lens to start with, I really want something equivalent to the 24 to 70 millimeter range with a fixed f2.8 aperture. So my absolute favorite lens that lives on my camera 90% of the time is the Sony 16 to 55 f2.8 lens. But another really great option in place of that lens is the Sigma 18 to 50 f2.8, as well as the Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8. I had the Tamron for a period of time and it was a great lens. I only returned it to get the Sigma 18 to 50, primarily for the option of having a smaller form factor that the Sigma offered. With that being said, I think the absolute best value if you can only have one lens for an APS-C Sony E-mount camera when considering quality, versatility, and cost is the Sigma 18-50 fixed 2.8 aperture lens. It's just hard to beat this one for value. And let's be realistic, there is no one right or wrong answer here. Everyone has different preferences, opinions, and needs related to this category. I think the only correct answer here that everyone would agree on is this answer. It depends. It depends on what your intentions are to use your camera for at that specific time. You may be shooting wildlife, birds, or something that benefits from a telephoto lens like the Sony 70-350, like this one here. You may be shooting portraits or something where you want a very shallow depth of field or an easily blurred background. For something like that, you may be looking at taking a prime lens or two with you. Something like the Sony 35mm f1.8 or the Sony 50mm f1.8. Sigma also makes great lenses in those ranges as well, with the Sigma trio of prime lenses in a f1.4 of the 16mm, 30mm, and I believe it's a 56mm if I'm not mistaken. They also have a 23mm that they released fairly recently. I have the Sigma 30mm f1.4 here, and this was one of my first lenses, and it's a very good lens. Also, something like an 11 millimeter prime lens, like this one right here, or a 15 millimeter prime lens, like the one I'm shooting on right now, the Sony f1.4 15 millimeter. And also the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 that I mentioned a bit ago. Those are all great for shooting vlogs, especially in a handheld situation because of their wider field of view. The first bonus item that I wanna mention is camera cages. I have the cages for the ZV-E10 and the A6400, and I plan to pick up the one for the A6700 and my FX30 soon. My experience has been with the small rig brand of cages. They are extremely good quality, fit, and design, and I have had no issues with them. And these are great for multiple reasons. The first reason that I wanted them was to beef up the grip on these two cameras the ZV-E10 and the A6400. The second reason, and probably why most would want a camera cage, is for the ability to rig out your camera with something like a top handle or a side handle or an external monitor, or for another cold shoe location for your microphone placement. They also make a small individual piece for the top of your A6400 so that you can relocate your microphone and not block your flip up screen. More bonus items. Now these are simple, useful, maybe obvious, but probably a good idea to have with you. I bring these next items with me every time. SD cards. Bring a spare or two for any cameras you're using that day. And it's a good idea to organize them in a way that makes it efficient for changing your cards out. I really like this Think Tank Secure Pixel Pocket Rocket case because of its design, quality, and convenience and also protects them from damage or getting lost and separates the type of cards and the ones that you've already filled up with photos or videos that day. Spare batteries. Better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. Of course, original OEM batteries are gonna be the best, but I have also had good luck with spares from newer and small rig. These next small useful items are super handy. A squeeze bulb style air blower and a soft lens brush for a quick means of safely removing dust from your lens or camera body. And a small soft absorbent towel for run-ins with water or rain just to be able to dry things a little more easily. Also consider putting together a small lightweight assortment of tools or hex keys that fit the screws on any of the equipment you use that you would commonly need that tool for and bring a bag that fits your gear comfortably and fits the situation of the day comfortably. I've accumulated a few different options over time and this is how I use them for different scenarios. 
The first one is this very small Sony bag, and it's really just big enough to fit a camera with a lens, spare batteries and SD cards, and not much else. I use this little bag when I'm going somewhere like dinner with family or a small get together to transport and protect my camera while in the vehicle mostly. This next bag here by Low Pro is definitely my favorite. The way I use this bag is to bring my camera with an additional lens or two, sling, a couple small accessories like filters, microphone, or maybe throw in a GoPro, and of course, batteries, SD cards, and cleaning accessories. I use this bag for those really nice outings when going somewhere like a museum, a park, a fair, or walking around and taking photos of something like a small historic part of a town. This is why I really like this bag. Due to its small to medium form factor, I carry it to my side across my body like this, and that combined with my sling setup and camera, I carry it off to the side of my body like this, it's lightweight and convenient, and I have easy access to my second lens, spare batteries, and memory cards without having to take off a backpack style of bag. And keep in mind, I'm not saying you need all of these bags. These are just ideas for you to visualize from my experiences. This next bag is a medium-sized backpack camera bag. I use this when I wanna carry a bit more gear, and maybe we'll be going on a small hike, or if I need to carry a tripod and maybe a second camera setup. The other backpack style bag I have is this larger one from Low Pro. I pack this bag when I wanna bring the house, but only when I would have to carry it a short while or can store it in my truck on a cool day. For this bag, it's typically one camera or two, multiple lenses, microphones, a GoPro, a drone, gimbal, a tripod, and all the necessities like batteries, SD cards, small tools, and cleaning accessories. And try to take the time to organize it nicely to make it efficient and pleasant to work out of throughout the day. 